Charleston is proud of its military men and women. And with multiple military branches in the Low Country, we'd like to focus on the mission of the 437th Aerial Port Squadron. Joining us to explain what they do is Senior Master Sergeant and Flight Chief William Charles. It's good to see you. Good to see you too, ma'am. So if you can tell us a little bit about what the 437th Aerial Port Squadron does. First of all, where are you located? Sure. So as of right now, we're located on Joint Base Charleston, Charleston Air Force Base in South Carolina. Okay, and what is it that you do there? So the mission of the 437th Aerial Port Squadron, or APS, is to provide a responsive global cargo and passenger operations while cultivating, growing our younger airmen. And what does that mean exactly? So I, I know that uh, you particularly deal in freight. So does that mean transporting freight, necessary freight sure. on any level to, to other service members or how does that work? That's, so that's exactly what we do here. Um, with regards to the first piece, the air freight part for which I work, uh, we're responsible for getting freight to whatever customer and wherever the customer needs the freight to go. Uh, specifically here in Charleston, um, we have the responsibility of working the SOCOM uh, channel mission which is Southern Command that goes down to Honduras. In addition to that, we also work uh, the Iraqi F-16 foreign military sales cargo mission and Australian for foreign military sales cargo mission as well. Uh, some other notes is that we also do humanitarian support and also things that are probably more relevant in times today with the transport isolation system known as the TIS and the NPC negative pressure connex. Uh, both of those deal with COVID-19. I see. So are you essentially transporting supplies to help with the fight against COVID-19? or? So with regards to COVID-19 specifically, what we're doing is that this was the test bed and then the eventual transport out uh, platform for the, for the mechanism for which passengers who are infected by COVID-19 could be transported to and from locations. Are these civilians so, or are these service members? So they're service members and civilians. I don't have the exact details on the first active mission. The first active mission happened a few weeks ago out of Ramstein Air Base. Um, but the hub for it, for the TIS that is, is Charleston. And then the test bed for the NPC or the negative uh, pressurized container or conix is uh, from here as well. Why is that important and, and why is it the military that's stepping in to transport civilians? This is very interesting to me. So the importance is just for the uh, global response for the pandemic. Um, we have service members to include civilians that are downrange that were uh, affected by the disease. Uh, so what had ended up happening there is that we have a requirement to move our members away from situations and get them back to where they can get taken care of. I see, I see. Quite invaluable. Uh, your service is worth its weight in gold. Uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Uh, when did you decide that you wanted to join the military? So a little bit about me. I'm originally from Antigua in the Caribbean. That's where I was born and partially raised. And then I moved to Tampa, Florida. So I don't have it up right now, but I, I would if I could. Um, I have a Bucks flag behind me. <laughs> <laughs> I moved to Tampa, Florida. Uh, my mom would kill me. I think I was <laughs> something like that. Uh, after that, I joined the Air Force in 1999. And why is that? Why the Air Force? That's a good question. Uh, looking back at it, there wasn't really a determining factor. And honestly, the first branch that I spoke to <laughs> were the Marines. Um, and they actually came to my house, did a presentation for my mom. And I was like, well, guess I'm going to be a Marine. And then I remember going back uh, as clear as day. There was like a pizza place right next to the, the four different branches, uh, recruiting uh, offices. And I remember the Air Force recruiter. Uh, he was a staff sergeant, Stephen Acevedo. He was like, oh, you don't want to do that. <laughs> so, I, <laughs> so I said, come join me. <laughs> I said, I don't know what you're talking about. And he was like this, come with me, like legitimately come with me, young man. So, <laughs> So I was, I was only, uh, I think, 19 at the time. No idea what's going on. All I know is high school, and I worked at Dairy Queen. Yeah. So, so <laughs> I walked in, and they started giving me the reasons why I wanted to join. And I know that eventually I would have to 
uh, be an adult and grow up one day. So I said, hey, man, let's do this. So wow. I, I signed on the dotted line. And look at these years later, you're now a senior master sergeant. That is so yes, wonderful. And any future missions you can give us a little insight on, on what we can expect? So any future missions regarding the 437th Aerial Port Squadron? Our, our biggest mission right now is the movement uh, in support of so Southern Command to include passengers and cargo. And with regards to anything future, while it might not be totally firm, uh, we should be expecting to take on a mission from Norfolk Naval Air Station down here in Charleston as well. So as the, the details of that get worked out, we're, we're more than ready to accept that mission set and, and show everybody within our parent command, which is Air Mobility Command, ready to show the rest of the aerial ports what we can do. You do us so proud. Sir, thank you so much for your service. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the support. Thank you for your time as well. We'll be right back.